Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with me, and today we're going to make a star album. Now, a lot of people out there have made them. They call them star books, uh, different things. This one, I came up with the measurements myself because I wanted it to be a size that I could put a good photo in for Mother's Day. So I'm making this for my daughter. Shh, don't tell her. Maybe she won't watch this. <laughs> But the first thing, you're going to need a cardstock that is cut at 8 by 5 and a half. Let me make sure. Yes, 8 by 5 and a half. You're going to put it in your scoreboard on the 8 inch side and you're going to score right down the center at 4. Okay. All right, lay that one aside for a moment. Then you're going to need another piece of paper, and I'm just using some of this leftover paper that we had left over from the classes in Texas. This is our uh, Prima Cherry Blossom. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that gold foil in there. We have some of this in stock, so grab it while you can. Prima and Graphic 45 is starting to already discontinue some of their most popular lines. I have no idea. I don't know what's going on with them, but we're trying to get it in as fast as we can and as much as we can, so grab the collections when you see them go up because I'm afraid they're not going to last long. All right, this one is cut at 7.5 by 5 inches. Make sure that's right. Yes. You put it on the 7.5 inch side, and you're going to score at three and three quarters. So three and three quarters. If you notice, you're just scoring right in the center of the long side. And then I'm doing a third one. You can um, decorate this up, this piece up. You can um, put photo mats on it. You can stamp it. You can do whatever you want to. I'm kind of going to kind of leave mine plain now. And I'm going to give her some embellishments and things. Let her put her photo on here. And then she can embellish it like she wants. But this piece is going to need to be 7 inches by 4 and a half inches. And you're going to score at 3 and a half right down the center. That gives her a good size for photos. Because that's 3 and a half by um, 4 and a half. So that's going to be a good size for her photos. All right, you're going to put your scoreboard aside, and this is what we're going to do to create this little book. First off, we're going to fold on our score line, and then we're going to put this book together. Now, this is some Nina cardstock, and it's that glossy that I have had. I can't get this anymore. I wish I could. But we do have some Nina in just the white, which is what I have in this one. It's that heavy, heavy cardstock in the white. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to layer these, and we're going to use our score tape. And you're going to put your score tape on the back side, depending on what side you want to use, if you have a double-sided paper. And then the same thing on this. Now you need the three layers to make this kind of look right, but you could change it up and put this on the front, that on the, it, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. I just put the solid on the front because I know that she'll like to stamp and do different things with it, so that's why I did it. But these can be changed up. They can be made larger, smaller. All you need to remember is when you come up with the size that you want, you need to go down half an inch, like this This one needs to be a half an inch smaller than this one, and then this one needs to be a half inch smaller than that one. So just stagger them like that. Now you're going to put this right up at the edge and kind of center it in there so you have about a quarter of an inch on both ends. So a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch down here. Make sure that I get that straight. Don't go over the edge, but go right up to it. Just like that. And then just fold this over. 
take the backing off the score tape. Now you can use wet glue on this if you want to. I like score tape just because it sticks really, really quick and I don't have to hold it. But just fold that over, take the score tape, the backing off the score tape, and then press that down. And you've got that just exactly like you want it. You want that gap left in there. So you want both ends to come all the way out to the edge. And you're going to do this one the same way. So center that up. You should have about a quarter of an inch on both sides. And then take the backing off the score tape. And then fold that over and press it down. And there is your part of your star book. Now you're going to need seven of these just like this. Now I have gone ahead and made the other ones just ahead of time. So you see that, let me slide it back this way a little bit. There's going to be our star album. Now, before you put this together, if you want to do your stamping and that kind of thing on the inside on this, you can. If you want to decorate it up, you can. You can do all of that. Like I said, I'm going to leave mine blank because I want her to put her pictures down and then she can decorate the sides as she wants. So that is going to be the inside of your star album. Seven of those is what you need. All right, and now we need to make the front and back cover. Now what I have done is cut a couple of pieces of chipboard and I cut them at four inches by five and a half inches. So I cut two of them that way. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna cover around the chipboard because this is actually going to be laying on top of that like that. So I'm just going to cover the top, but I'm going to go around the edges. I've got my um, Faber-Castell Big Brush Pit Pen, and I'm going to go around the edges and just make sure that that is colored really, really well. And it looks like this pen, I use this one all the time, so it looks like it's about dry. Don't worry about if you do that, because that's going to be covered. I do that all the time, because I get in a hurry. Nobody else gets in a hurry, do you? I just can't wait to get a project done. I just want to get this one done and get on to another one. But all that's going to be covered, so don't worry about it. So that's what you want right there. It's just all of that brown in that chipboard to be colored up. Do the same thing on the other one. You can use ink to, if you don't have one of these pens, you can use ink to ink this up if you want to. Doesn't matter. As long as you color it up so that, you know, you won't see that chipboard out there. This one's got some little frayed pieces on it. Probably need to change my blade and my big trimmer. And I cut these. A lot of people ask me, what do you cut your chipboard with? I cut my chipboard with the rotary, the Fiskars rotary trimmer. It cuts through it very, very easy. I don't have any problem with it. I do that better than an X-Acto knife. Some people can handle an X-Acto knife with no problem. This girl cannot for some reason. I don't know why, but so I just use my, I'll show you the trimmer. I just use this. It's a rotary trimmer. Uh, it has a rotary blade on it and it cuts through chipboard like butter. So I love that. Okay, now I'm gonna cover this with a piece of paper that is the exact same size as my chipboard. And that is four inches by five and a half. Now all of these measurements will be on my blog, so don't worry about pausing the video, writing it down. We'll have a direct link to this project over on my blog and you can go over there get all of the measurements off of that so you'll have them you can write the measurements down and then watch the video and you've got it and I'm just using my art glitter glue to cover this 
because it gives you that little bit of wiggle room that you're going to need when you put something like this down. And I have a little brayer somewhere. I have no idea where it is. There we go. I'm going to brayer that down just a little bit. All right. Then I have a piece of this paper that is cut at to make a mat and it's cut at three and three quarters by five and one quarter and we're going to put that here to make another mat. Isn't that pretty? I love that. Okay. We are shipping Art Glitter Glue if you live in a warm climate. We're not shipping overseas and we're not shipping up north. But if you live in Florida, Texas, anywhere down south, Louisiana, that kind of thing, you are welcome to place your order if you want to. Now we're going to do the other one the same way. I'm going to mat it. Now before you put start putting your album together, you need to cut a piece of ribbon or something to tie it together once you get it made. And you're going to lay it down on the first sheet. Close it up, lay it down on there. Leave enough room to tie a bow or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my about in the center. I'm going to put a piece of score tape right across there. And then that should be about enough to tie. Then I'm just going to place that down just like that. And then this can glue right on top of it. Since I am gluing chipboard, I'm going to put a little clip on this and just lay it aside for a moment. Now we can start gluing these inside ones together. So you're just going to glue back to back or back to front. And you can use wet glue, you can use score tape, you can use whatever you want. I'm going to use my wet glue because it, it sticks really well, but it gives me just a little bit of time to wiggle things around. Just make sure that you get it, the glue right out to the edges, because you want these backs to glue together really, really well. So that's what you want to do to all of them. So if you want to go ahead and do that, and I will get mine done. Okay, we have all of those pages stuck together. So there will be our star book, our mini album, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to stick the back on. And it's starting to get a little bit bulky, so I'm going to put this on with score tape. You can put all the sheets on with score tape if you want. It's going to hold a little bit better. The, the um, art glitter glue holds really well, but anything that you're putting a little bit of pressure on doesn't hurt to have a strong adhesive on there. Okay, now we're going to decide which way is right and which way is wrong. That's the up, okay. Then we're just going to lay this down. And the best way I have found is just to stand it up. Whoops, we almost forgot. Got to put our ribbon across here. So I need to pull those over a little bit more. Pull our ribbon across. And just press it down on those that are already there. There we go. And then put our back on. And I just stand it up and it helps it helps a little bit. I 
All right, there we go. And then just pull those out a little at a time. Pull that one out. Press it down. There you go. So give it a good press just to make sure that everything is sticking right. If you have a little bit of glue there like I do, we can go ahead and pull that off. And then I just need to trim these. I'm going to trim them just a little right now and then we'll trim them more once we get it tied. This is a very slick ribbon and me and bows don't work anyway so there we go so you can tie your bow a lot better than me I'm sure there we go and then just trim off the excess And there is your mini album. Now you can decorate this front over how you want. I'm going to decorate it a little bit, but not a lot. She's not a big frou-frou girl, so. And then when you set it down, she can open it up like this. She can tie these together, and her star album will stay. Let's just go ahead and tie these so that you can see how it will stay open. So there we go. Then you've got your star album. So every, all of the pages can have photos on there, decorated any way you want, and anywhere anyone sits, they can see the star album. I think they're super cute, and they're, they're just great to sit up somewhere. You know, a lot of our albums that have photos in them, we lay them down and nobody ever sees them. But this one, you can just feel full of goodness, full of pictures and things of grandkids, whatever. This would be a fantastic Mother's Day gift. I'd love to get one of these with my grandchildren's pictures in there. Now, you don't want to do a lot of thick embellishing on the front, just simply because when you open it up, you don't want something thick and bulky there. So we might do just a little bit of embellishing. Let's see what I have to put on here. All right, so this is all the decorating we're going to do to the front. Most of this is kind of flat, so it won't won't bother when we start to open it up. These are some of the cherry blossoms out of the um, pack, and the number is three five seven nine three nine, and that's what they look like. And I think it is. Let's see, we got a number here. 24 in here, so that's a good amount. So we're going to use one of the large ones. And then two of the smaller ones. We're going to put that those right there. And then I have just a little metal butterfly. And what I did is I took some of these uh, Faber-Castell glass bead glitter, like I showed on my video the other day making the card. And I just kind of put it on there. And I just used one of these little tools, and I just kind of globbed it on there and then let it dry. And see, it gives it just a little bit of glitter and shine. I like that. So we'll tuck him right up under there. And then I cut this out of the paper collection. It's just one of the little butterflies I cut out. And we'll put him down here. So let's, I'm going to use some hot glue. Okay, so that is, that is the front of it. And now these are the little metal butterflies that you can tilt their wings up. But I left mine flat because we don't want any bulk in there. And you could go ahead and put more on here if you want. I think that's all I'm going to do. So then when you open it up and you tie that, you can still tie that with no problem. And there is all of your pages right there. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I think my daughter's going to like that. And it's real substantial because you've got that chipboard on the front and on the back. 
Okay, guys, that is it for our project today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And we will be back with more videos, more tutorials very soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.